Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. Marshall. Memory, the ability to recall. For some, it is total. For most of us, a patchwork of light and shade. We can't always remember the things we want to. The things we would like to forget, we so very often can't. The most unpleasant, we lock in some secret room of the mind, hoping to close them away forever, till some chance key unlocks the door and lets the skeleton of remembrance loose to rattle its bones and haunt us again. What are you doing, Barry? Oh, I'm trying to sketch what this guy might look like without the beard and the dark glasses. There. Would you recognize him, Meg? Yes. It's that face you always draw without knowing you're doing it. Who is it, Barry? Who is he? Oh, uh, someone like... Lazarus, who seems to be risen from the dead. Our mystery drama, Out of the Past, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Paul Hecht. I'll be back shortly with Act One. I suppose we all have a secret known only to ourselves, except for whoever took part in it. It could be anything, something we are ashamed of, because at the time it made us ludicrous, or that we are afraid of, or some precious moment of love, or tenderness, or happiness that existed only in the moment when it was, or most disturbing of all, it could be something quite dreadful which lurks in the back of the mind all the time. Something that we have tried to bury and refuse to remember. Hi, this is Barry Jordan's machine. I'm not here at the moment, so please leave a message and phone number, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Don't forget to wait for the beep. Barry, this is Herb Peters at WVKD. Where are you, out bashing a few at tennis? Look, as soon as you feel you got time to make a living, I got a job for you. Call me. You know the number. Hi. Anybody home? Just me. Who's me? Oh, never mind that. Who are you? Barry Jordan, all-American husband. Oh, don't I know it. And I'll settle for being just your wife. How was tennis? I was sensational. Oh, did you win? Come on, you can't have everything. I was ambulance chasing. Sir, I'll have you remember, I am a corporation lawyer. So, did you chase any corporations? <laughs> As one working stiff to another, don't knock my profession. Yeah, well, at least yours is gainful. So is yours. Yeah, when I sell a canvas or work. Oh, which reminds me, you have a job. Oh, what? Herb Peters called you from WVKD. It's on the answering machine. Well, why didn't you tell me? I better call him right away. Uh, while you're at it, I'll rustle up some dinner. What are we having? Din dun a la ennui. Well, what the heck is that? Turkey again. <laughs> I told you we shouldn't buy such a large bird for Thanksgiving. Herb Peters, WVKD. Herb, it's Barry. What's up? Oh, Barry. A uh, few days work in the courtroom if you want to go for it. Oh, brother. How long? Well, how long is the trial? Who knows? This one shouldn't be worth more than a few days, but news figures this one's pretty hot, so they'll stick with it to the bitter end no matter how long it runs. Are you interested? 
Well, sure, but... I know it's hack work, and it's a bore to a serious artist, but the pay is good. No, no, it isn't that. But Meg and I were planning on taking off to New Hampshire for a ski week. Oh, I didn't know you skied. Oh, I don't, but Meg does. I was going to paint. So what? There'll be snow there next month, or the month after? Yeah. Only then, Meg won't have any time off. Well, that's what you get for marrying an emancipated woman. You gotta live their lives instead of your own. Hey, now, now, now. Wait a minute, buddy. The only reason Meg works so hard is because she wants me to have some time for some serious painting. So make some easy TV dough, and before you know it, both of you will be free to do whatever you want to. Yeah, I guess. Ah, uh, okay. What's the case? Fergus armored truck robbery. Got away with something over a million dollars in small bills, mostly either unmarked or out of sequence. There were four guys. Two of them got killed in the caper. One spent half a year in the hospital before he recovered. Oh, what happened to the fourth guy? Never found him. Or the money. Look, Barry, suppose we have breakfast tomorrow here at the studio at 8.30. There'll be time to brief you before you get to court. The trial won't begin until after the lawyers have picked the jury, so probably won't be until after lunch. Deal? I guess. I don't know why. I, I got a feeling I could regret this. Okay, see you tomorrow morning, 8.30. It always comes when you don't want it. Oh, you need any help, honey? No, no, darling. I had everything cut up and prepared. It has to simmer for a while. What are you doing? Mm, I'm just looking through an old sketchbook of yours. That stuff? Mm -hmm. That's all discarded. I meant to throw it out. Nothing you draw, sketch, or paint ever gets thrown out. Genius. Oh, come on. Well, look at this sketch, for example. I don't even know what it is. It's a boy you sketched. You... Wait, wait a minute. Here. In, in, in the midst of this crowd. Here, in, in this one, too. And Barry, I've seen it in others. I don't know who he is, but his face seems to fascinate you. Well, he's got nothing to do with anything. He's just part of the crowd or the audience. Oh, but it's such a haunting face, Barry. That great wide brow with the strange kind of indented temples. Those staring, accusing eyes that, that look so much bigger than normal. Because the lower part of his face is so pinched and mean. Oh, it, it's a frightening face. Yeah, it's all in the eye of the beholder, darling. Oh, not something like this. That's why you're a great artist, Barry. You have to be recognized. Why, you can turn a person outside in so that it's not his face you're looking at, but a picture of his soul. I love your praise, darling, but I'm really not that good. Oh, yes, you are. Well, just as long as you think I am. Uh, tell me, what did Herb want? Oh, he, he has a job for me, a new trial. No TV cameras, so they want some graphic art to use on the TV report. You know, courtroom drawings. You're going to do them, aren't you? Well, it could cut into your vacation time. Oh, never mind that. You're all that matters. Meg, this is illustration work. It's it's not uh, it's not for eternity. It could buy you enough recognition so you can paint for eternity. Come on, you do it. It's important. Now let's eat. More coffee, Barry. Oh no, thanks, Meg. That was super. <laughs> Are you as good a lawyer as you are a cook, honey? No complaints yet? Well, how was your day in court? Oh, a bore. Not that I spent much of it there. I didn't impanel a jury till nearly three in the afternoon. But you had to hang around. No. Still don't see why this case is supposed to be such a hot item. Well, what's it about? Well, it's kind of a dead issue. You see, a couple of years ago, four guys heisted a Fergus armor truck. The gimmick was they had an inside man. What do you mean? Well, one of the Fergus guards was assigned to stay inside the truck. Uh -huh. The doors could only be opened on his say-so once he was convinced the coast was clear. Well, so how was he implicated? I'll tell you, three guys in stocking masks jumped the outside guards, and according to the testimony of one of them before he died, the inside guard opened up for one of the masked robbers who then double-crossed him and shot him. 
Then, one of the robbers turned on his two buddies, shot them, and cleaned out the negotiable cash and hefted it to a waiting getaway car. How much did they get away with? A million, give or take a buck or so. Two men? No, no, only the ringleader got away. Well, wasn't somebody driving the getaway car? Yeah, he was found down by the river in the abandoned car, shot through the head with a bullet. Incidentally, that came from the same gun that killed the inside guard. So this ringleader, the killer, he got away? Yeah, along with the million. It's never been found. Mm. One of the two robbers he shot lived, and that's what the trial's all about. He, he spent six months in the hospital recuperating and a year and a half on bail pending the trial. And nothing new has happened in all this time? I mean, they didn't turn up the money? They have no new leads? To who was the main guy in all of this? Well, that's it. That's, that's what I can't figure. I mean, why bring it to trial? I could hazard a guess. You could? Yeah. Maybe the plaintiff has copped a plea. He's ready to identify the main guy and lead them to the money. The insurance company is probably putting on some heavy pressure. Sorry you had a wasted day. It wasn't wasted. I spent most of it in Courthouse Square. The sun was just perfect. I knocked off three watercolors and some pencil sketches. A couple of them are not too bad. Hmm. Let me see. <laughs> My kindest critic. Yeah, I'll get my sketchbook. Let's look at it in the living room, okay? Why not? I'll bring a little coffee for both of us. Yeah, that'll be nice. Oh, uh, put the cups on the table for a minute. Yeah, first, here we are. How does this one grab you, huh? Very. That is beautiful. Oh, thank the architecture of the courthouse and that fantastic morning light. I, I think I think I sort of caught it. Oh, yeah, hey, this this one, this one's no bad either. Oh, it's just stunning. Well, who's the old tramp in the foreground? Oh, that's just some guy with a beard. He was uh, sitting on one of the benches. Oh, the colors in this are lovely. Oh, there's that guy again. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I <laughs> didn't realize he was still sitting there. What's this, darling? Oh, that's funny. I, I don't remember sketching those. It's the same bearded man, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. Well, now, what made you so interested in him? Uh, I, I, I don't know. Hey, look. Yeah? Here, here he is again. Oh. Wait a minute. What? It's something. I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just beginning to see that I didn't see then. Barry, what is it? Uh, just a sec. Here. Um, here, let me get a pencil. Uh, what are you doing? Trying to imagine... This guy might look like without a beard. Why? Uh, j just, uh, just give me a moment longer. It's <sighs> so darn difficult with those dark glasses over his eyes. I'm only making a guess, and maybe it isn't a guess. I don't understand. No, Charlie. just, just, just one moment longer, Meg. <sighs> there. I wonder if I'm crazy. Would you recognize him, Meg? Well, I don't know. Now, look, I mean, supposing his eyes were, were just, just a little more, just a little more like this, and the lower part of the face were narrower, like this. That's the face you're always doodling, the one I asked you about. It could be. You don't suppose he really could be alive. What do you mean, alive? I mean, you see, all, all these years, I... I've been so sure he was dead. He's he's haunted me, you know. He's he's ridden on my back like like the old man of the sea. So you do know him. You do know who belongs to the ghost face of that evil lost boy you draw. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Meg, I never thought I would ever tell anyone about him. I I've tried to bury him to to forget him, but I guess I always knew I'd have to tell you eventually, Meg. Tell me what? What I've been terrified to tell anyone for the last 20 years. So, a key has been turned to loose a ghost from the past. Who is the evil boy with the hooded eyes so full of accusation? Is he the man of the present who hides behind the dark glasses and the heavy beard? If so, why is he still alive instead of dead long ago, as Barry seems to remember him? 
I shall return shortly with Act Two. Nothing is harder to begin than a confession, no matter how simple it is. Barry Jordan is struggling with that problem now. As the evening darkens outside the windows of their living room, Meg and he sit frozen into temporary immobility in a small pool of light thrown by the lamp she has turned on. The light is on Barry as he gropes for words to start. You never knew my father. He died before we met. I'm sorry I never got a chance to know him. No, no, don't be. Barry. No, he was a bigoted, narrow-minded, petty tyrant. He ruled, he ruled the house like a despot. After my mother got sick and, and died, he, he was even worse. I'm so sorry, darling. Both my brothers and my sister couldn't wait to be old enough to break away, just, just to escape. I mean, you have to understand about my father to understand the story I'm going to tell. How, how he terrified me. All right, darling. What, uh, what did he do to you? Oh, he didn't do anything, Meg. I, I did that myself. What did you do? I killed him. Oh. Well, I let him die. Not your father. Yeah, Sundays. Sundays were always the worst. There was no TV, there was no radio, no games even. Oh, yeah, I could read the Bible or do homework or sit at attention if neighbors called to give their respects. I'd have to sit there listening to the drone of those dull conversations trying to stay awake with murder on my mind. The day was a thousand years long. Oh, I suppose a lot of kids have had to weather dreary Sundays like that. Yeah, 50 years ago, maybe, not 1960. Not when the sun's shining outside and everyone else is playing ball. Oh, this one Sunday, this one Sunday, suddenly, miraculously, I, I was free. After Mass, the priest caught me and he, he told me that my father had called. He had to take my mother to the hospital or something. She'd be taking tests all day and my father would stay with her. I was to go straight home, not to worry. Mother would be all right. They'd be back by supper time. But you didn't go straight home. <laughs> Darn right I didn't. At first, I thought I'd go back and get into the neighborhood ball game and, and then I was afraid some nosy parent might report me to my folks. Instead, I went the other way down to the river. You were still living in Kendrick City then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I got to the river, I sort of wandered along the dock area. The very last jetty jutted out some, and I walked out to look at the water. Wasn't anybody around, just me. I found some loose stones, chucked them in the water, and I knelt down to peer over the edge. I got the fright of my life. I nearly bumped heads with a guy who was clambering up from the pilings below. What was he doing down there? I don't know. Whatever it was, he didn't seem to want me to know. First off, he said something like, you know, what are you doing spying on me? I, I, I said I wasn't. He was, he was about two or three years older than me. He had a, a black, scraggly sort of mustache and, and a mean face. I'll never forget that face. The one you draw all the time, without knowing you do. Yeah. Yeah, he he asked who I was. I told him my name. He he wanted to know where I lived. I, I said the North End, and <laughs> he grinned and said, rich kid, huh? Mm. I said, no, no, no. Well, where did he live? He told me the South End, Hell's Kitchen. He told me his name was Duke. Didn't I want to go for a boat ride? I said, Sure. He drew me to the edge. He showed me an old rowboat tied up to the pilings. Was it his boat? No, no, I don't think so. But, oh, that didn't stop him. He, he couldn't untie the knot, so he he brought out a switchblade to cut the rope. How'd you row? Were there oars in the boat? No. No, Duke took up a floorboard. He, he used it like, like a paddle. Hmm. We started out towards the middle of the river. How'd you get the nerve? You can't swim? I mean, you've always told me you can't. You don't even like the water. I, I, I told him I couldn't swim. He said he couldn't either. But you went anyway. Well, I didn't want to chicken out. It was an adventure after all. Until we started to get pretty far out on the river. I got... I wanted to go back. And that's when he pulled a gun on me. Well, what for? He said, all right, Fink. You ain't getting no chance to rat on me over the side into the water. Barry, 
I can't believe it. No, neither could I. I thought he was kidding. I, I said, I won't. Take your choice, he said. I, I used a gun once to kill a guy today. I could just as well use it again. Oh, oh but you're here, Barry. You're here. How did you get away from him? Ah, uh, instinct. Self-preservation. Oh. I'd been paddling, and the board was in my hands, so I belted him with it, and the gun went over the side into the water. Mm. He started reaching for his knife, but he was groggy. I started to struggle with him, and as I did, we fell with our combined weight on the gunnel of the boat, and it capsized. Oh, how awful. What did you do? Well, when I surfaced half drowned, I I thought I was dead. It was all black suddenly, but, but just then I, I found something to hang on to. What? Well, it, it was the seat. I, I'd come up under the boat, you see, and mm. in the air pocket, I, I, was, I was trapped there, but, mm. but the boat was settling, you see. I, I, knew, I knew I couldn't stay there too long. And so as soon as I could get up the nerve, I, I ducked under the water. I held onto the rope I'd found and, and came up on, on the outside and and then I pulled myself back on, on the boat till I was spread-eagled on top. Barry, it's so fantastic. Are you sure you didn't dream it? <laughs> I wish I had. Oh, what happened to the other boy? Uh, he drowned. No sign of him anywhere. How did you get out of it? <laughs> you know, that was simple. The current of the river drove the boat onto a, onto a sandbar, and I just climbed off and, and ran for home. Were your father and mother back when you got there? Uh, no, thank heavens. I went by some back alleys. No one I knew saw me. And, well, when I got home, I stripped her and dried my suit. I, I could even remember ironing it. I, mm. I didn't want my father to know or anyone. You mean you've never told anyone about this since it happened? No. Nope. You're the first. But why? Why? I killed someone, Meg. But that was an accident. Yeah, but can I prove it? I, I was alive. He was dead. But through no fault of yours, he brought it on himself. Yeah, maybe. But you see, I committed the first sin. I disobeyed my father. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't let him know that. Oh, he had you that terrified of him? Yeah. He had me that terrified. Mm. And all these years, you've hidden this secret, making it a guilty thing. That's right. Twenty years. Oh, how dreadful. And what a dreadful man your father must have been. I have to take the blame. Don't you see, Meg? That's why I, I've got to find this bearded man. I, I've got to hope and, and, and pray he turns out to be this guy, Duke, grown up. And then maybe I can grow up, too, and get this cross off my back at last. <laughs> Cup of coffee, no fixings. I'll drink it here, Betty. Oh, hey, Barry. How you doing, kid? I can't complain, Lieutenant. What brings you down to Courthouse Square so early in the morning? Well, I was going to ask you the same thing. Well, I'm doing some graphics for the Fergus robbery case. Uh, yeah, no, but uh, court doesn't convene till 10 a.m. Well, so I came early looking for a friend. Oh, that's funny. That's what brought me here. Oh, uh, thanks, son. Mm. You find your friend? No, not yet. You? No, uh, but we will, sooner or later. Uh, I wish I could be as sure as you. This case, your headache, Lieutenant? You bet your bucket, Jed. I thought it was all in the DA's hands now. Uh, the trial is just a showpiece. Bait. What? It's been a mind bender from the beginning, Barry. Here's a holdup. Four guys on the outside, an inside man, a Fergus man, bought off to open up the truck. The moment he opens the door... This one guy, one guy, mind you, pumps lead in him. Then he turns around. While his buddies are holding up the outside guards, he guns all of them down. <laughs> we call him the mad dog. Yeah, but he got away with a million. He needed help for that. The driver of the getaway car was still around. He didn't get the old double O till the dough was smashed somewhere. It was time for the dog to hand out more lead poisoning. I tell you, I want that killer so bad my teeth hurt. Yeah, but after all this time, you still have no lead? Just Burnett, the guy on trial you're drawing pictures of. Yeah, but he claims he never saw your, your mad dog out of his stocking mask. That's for the record. Between you and me, when Burnett was in the hospital first and thought he was going to cash in his chips... He gave us a clear identification. Oh, yeah? Who was he? Uh, your mad killer. Who knows? A string of AKAs a mile long, but no way to nail down any of them is his real name. 
All we had was some mug shots. They didn't lead you to him? We've had an APB out on him for over a year. He's gone to Earth someplace. That's why we finally went to trial. To flush him out. Oh, yeah? How? Oh. Well, the one thing we were able to do after the robbery was to sew up this town in 20 minutes. I'll stake my bottom dollar. never got the dough out. So? So the result of this trial is going to be on all the radio, TV, all the media. What's the result? Burnett can't really identify the main robber. He doesn't know where the money is. Now, once our mad dog is sure of that, he'll make the break, take the money and run. Then we got him. Oh, yeah, how? The town sewed up. Uh, you can't stop everything that moves. Only what we have to. Taxis, out-of-town plates. Suppose he has a private car. Only one way this baby has a private car. It's stolen. We'll monitor all those plates. Uh, it's still not 100%. Hey, you know anything that is? I got a feeling we are going to get this guy. Well, I give my regards to that uh, sweet missus of yours. I'll do that, Lieutenant. Happy hunting. I hope you close the book on your friend. When I do, I'm not only going to throw it at him, I'm going to stub it down his gullet. Hey, <laughs> hope you catch up with your pal, too. Hello? Hi, hon. You still home? Oh, I was just about to leave. Any luck? No, no. I hang around here for a couple of hours. I don't know if you'll ever show again. Oh, Barry, I don't know what to say. Me neither. Oh, uh, I had a cup of coffee at the local joint on the square with Sid Sloan. Who? Oh, you remember? The lieutenant of police you think is such a swell guy? Oh, of course, him. Don't you? Yeah, sure, sure. I'm just jealous today. You know, he's looking for someone, too. Only he's got a whole police force to pin him down, and how am I going to pin my guy down when there's just me? Oh, honey, what can I say? Yeah, I... yeah. Hey, hey, Meg, he just went by. Uh, outside, uh, the beard. Now, you hold the fort. I'll get back to you after I talk to him. Now, who do you suppose is more likely to clear up unfinished business? A lieutenant of police or a private citizen? And why should such disparate events as a childhood escapade of 20 years ago have any relationship to a more recent robbery and vicious massacre. Did I say they did? If I did, I didn't intend to. Our story is only a little more than half told. For its conclusion, you will have to wait for Act Three. Except by chance, how does a man reach across the tangle of the years to solve a mystery buried two decades ago? And even supposing that a solution was there, how can a man be faulted for being human enough to miss the opportunity? We're not talking about Lieutenant Sid Sloan, of course. He is a man with the whole power of the establishment behind him to make things happen. Barry Jordan is an individual who can only try. Yes? Meg? Oh, you, you just caught me. I was going out the door. Did you see him, darling? No, no. By the time I got out of the phone booth and down into the square, I missed him. Oh, I'm sorry. You don't make it so tantalizing? I mean, so near and yet so far? But I, I got a hunch. My boy lives around here somewhere. Otherwise, he wouldn't keep turning up. So, uh, don't count on me for dinner tonight, okay? Why? Well, after the trial is over this afternoon, I'm going to go prowling. I'm going to see if I can dig him up. Barry, that's crazy. You're not a policeman. You don't even know where to start. Why don't you... Oh. Yes, sir. What can I get you? Oh, uh, miss, uh, could, you, could, could I ask you a question? I, uh... Um, I, ju I just want to ask you, have you ever seen this man in here? Well, how could I tell? It's just a drawing. Uh, well, um, here, here are a couple of other sketches. Well, what can I tell you? Beards and dark glasses are in. Hey, you from the police? No, no, why, why would you think that? Well, I just caught the end of the news on the TV. They nailed a guy for that armored truck robbery, but they're still looking for the mastermind and the million. Are you after that? No, no, no. This has nothing to do with that. This is... 
Now, this is a personal affair. Oh, well, count me out. Hey, what'd the beard do? Take off with your old lady? <laughs> no, no, nothing like that. Uh, look, it's it's terribly important to me. Have you have you ever seen this man in here? Well, let me look. Yeah. Oh. Did you draw this? Yeah. Well, c- could you do a portrait like this of me? Well, I, uh... Oh, I don't need no favors. Well, you seem like a nice guy, though. And this crumb don't mean nothing to me. He don't even tip. Yeah, I've seen him here off and on. For that matter, he was here this afternoon just after I came on. Yeah? D- does he uh, Does he live near here? Search me. Oh, look, mister, I got customers. Uh, look, j- just, just just a minute, please. If if he does, where would, would you guess he might live? Well, this end of town is lousy with joints. Rundown hotels, women houses, you name it. Hey, look, I gotta go. Uh, look, look, miss. If I uh, if I draw a picture of you and, and and give it to you, could you could you figure some way I I could find this man? Oh, I'd sure like a picture of me, but I wouldn't want to kid you. I I tell you what, if anyone would know, it'd be the Greek. The who? Papadopoulos. He runs the one arm joint across the street. Well, why would he know? He sends out all around the neighborhood. This beard of yours has got to eat, don't he? Yeah, yeah. Hey, that's a great idea. I'll go right over. Oh, you won't find him there now. He's closed up. Oh. Well, well, what time does he open up tomorrow? Tomorrow? Well, that's Saturday. No breakfast. Um, I'll say around 11. I, I can't find him anywhere tonight. But what do I know from the Greek? Say, for a freeloader, you've got some nerve tying up all my time. Story of my life. Something for nothing. <laughs> hey, not this time. Um... What's your name? Trixie. Why? I just want to say thanks. Here. Hey, that's me. You just do that while we... Oh, hey, that's beautiful. You don't know what that does for me. Uh, So are you, Trixie. (laughs) And you don't know what you may have done for me. More coffee, Barry? No, no, thanks, May. Hey, it's 10.30. I better get going. I'll order some coffee from Papadopoulos in exchange for any information he may have. You want me to go with you? No, no, no. It's better I go alone. Hey, if I don't get a break from my Greek contact, I'll have to start gumshoeing again. (laughs) You're going to be gone all day? Well, I want to find him. Mm, Well, I understand. Yeah, but I can't make a life career of it. This was supposed to be the beginning of our vacation. Oh, that's all right, honey. No, 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 it isn't. Well, my job is over now that the trial's finished. Hey, look, Meg, no matter what happens today, we leave this afternoon for New Hampshire. Know him? Of course I do. His name is Mr. Johnson. Uh, you wouldn't happen to know where he lives. What are you? Police? No, no, no. I'm, I'm just an old uh, acquaintance. Uh, what the heck I care. He's a lousy tipper. Shelley Hotel. Uh, you wouldn't know his room number, huh? I, uh, I'm not such a bad tipper, maybe. Ooh, for five bucks, you could have my sister's telephone number. 421, top floor. He, uh, he don't like visitors much. I gotta see him. So, one hand washes the other. I got a ham and cheese for him to go. You want to deliver it for me? Sure, sure. Hey, I'll even pay for it. What, I call a gentleman. (laughs) In case you should get generous, you can keep the tip. Yeah, who is it? Delivery, coffee in. I uh, hold it. All right, just put it. On. Hey, what is this? You know, delivery Look, boy. If, you, if you'll just let me explain. I'll say you'll explain. All right, All right just spread it on the hands against the wall. Hey, if, if, if you'll just let me shut let up and get your hands up. The, the, the coffee, drop it and shut up. What are you, fuzz? No, no, no. I'm not the police. Okay, you're clean. What are you looking for, Mac? I'm looking for you. Yeah, well, you're going to be sorry you found me. I don't see why. I, I just want to know if, if if you're a guy named named Duke that 20 years ago capsized with me just south of Kendrick City in the Salt Ash River. What? you got to be kidding. Who are you? I'm Barry. The kid who was in the boat with a guy named Duke. I don't know. You got it all pat, everything that happened. I was there. What's your angle? Nothing. Now I know you're alive. I, I don't have to feel any guilt about you anymore, so, so we can say goodbye. Not so fast. 
You don't think I'm going to let you walk out of here? Why not? Because I seen you at the trial. What trial? Come on, the one that closed up yesterday. I should have known you cops had a gimmick going. How'd you make me? I don't know what you're talking about. The Fergus trial. You want to say that you weren't there? No, no, of course I was there. What for? I'm, I'm an artist. I, I was there to draw some pictures for TV because cameras are not allowed in the courtroom. That's all? That's all. Now, may I leave? No way. No, well, I don't see how you can stop me. Try this out for size. And I'll use it if I have to. Now, let's talk a little turkey. All right, Barry, we talked it all out. Twenty years ago, you caught me stashing some loot on the first job I ever ripped off. I took you out in that rowboat for two reasons. One, I had to get rid of the gun I used... Second, I wanted to also get rid of you, just in case you've seen anything you shouldn't. You know, it's funny, everything you say about the past makes me feel better. Well, it shouldn't. I'd just as soon wipe you this minute, except it don't suit my plans. Look, I've tried to explain. You can't get out of it. You might as well give up. With what's in them two suitcases by the door? Nearly two years, it's been sitting in dead storage. After the robbery, that stupor was wheeling for us. Come back here with me. We broke open the steel files. Then we stacked the money in a suitcase, and next morning we took him to dead storage. And after that, you drove to the junkyard and you killed him. That's right. Dead men tell no tales. Like me? Now, look. It's four hours until I leave for my plane. You want to figure out what else I can do with you? Yeah, this is Lieutenant Sloan, 10th Precinct. This is Barry Jordan's wife. Meg, hey, good to talk to you. How are you? Lieutenant, Sid, I'm scared. What's the matter? It's Barry. We were supposed to catch a plane over an hour ago, but he... Barry's disappeared. <laughs> He's uh, run out on you? No, no, nothing like that. He... Oh, it's, it's hard to explain over the phone. Could I come to the station house and talk to you? Well, uh, you picked a bad time, Meg. You just caught me on my way out. Oh, Sid, I'm Trouble. A lot more than he can handle. Uh, tell you what, Meg. Uh, I'm on my way to the Houston Street Bridge. That takes me right by your place. I'll stop in on the way. That's raining like crazy out there. Wouldn't want to miss my plane. Time to say goodbye, mister. What are you going to do? Going to wait for the next L to go by. When there's enough noise to cover the shot, I'm going to take you out. You can't get away with it. Oh, I'll take that chance. Look, you'd, you'd be better off with my help. What good could you do me? I've been trying to tell you. Now, look, Lieutenant Sloan has every escape route covered. You can't break out. Right out. You don't know me from Adam. Well, that's where you're wrong. Your buddy, Burnett, put the finger on you. What are you talking about? He ratted on you. Don't give me that. You were at the trial. You know he clammed up. Ah, that was a cover-up to flush you into the open. I told you, my friend, Lieutenant Sloan, has every escape route tied up. There's only one way you can get out of this city. Yeah, how? It's, it's in my car. W with me to vouch for you to get you on your plane. Who needs your help? I mean, you're a jinx. I should have taken care of you 20 years ago when you first stuck your nose in my business. If the cops have a make on me, how are you getting me past them? Well, the beard and the glasses have worked pretty good up to now, and you have me to vouch for you. What are you slowing down for? Well, we're almost across the bridge. We already paid the toll. There's a roadblock ahead. Would you, would you let me handle it? Well, you better handle it good. I got a gun right up against you, which has already killed six people. Uh, you don't have to tell me I'm living on borrowed time. Oh, uh, officer. Yeah, what's the trouble? Oh, Barry, for crying out loud. Where are you headed on a night like this? Sid, uh, Lieutenant Sloan, why... Uh, you remember that friend I, I was looking for yesterday? Yeah? Well, uh, out of the blue, I I just bumped into him today. I'm I'm just driving him out to the airport. What's what's going on here? Uh, we're, uh, we're just uh, running a check on some drug peddling. Uh, say, uh, <laughs> any friend of yours is a friend of mine. I'd, uh, I'd like to shake his hand. I'm uh, Lieutenant Sid Sloan. Put it there, friend. Uh, yeah. Yeah, sure, Lieutenant. Nice to meet you. Uh, you won't be thinking that long, brother. That... Let, let go! Sergeant! 
Get his other arm, Major, or you snap on your life. Which from here on in isn't worth a thin dime. I still don't understand how... Darling, when you didn't show up to leave for the plane with me, I was frantic. I knew something had happened, so I called Sid. At that point, there wasn't too much I thought we could do until Meg showed me a sketchbook and the man you were looking for. Then, the balloon went up. What balloon? The face of that boy that's haunted you all these years. He was a dead ringer for the face that's haunted me the last two. The mad dog, clear as a photograph. And your sketches of him without a beard showed Sid it was the same man. I want to tell you, Barry Pal, you are some kind of genius with that eye of yours. You ought to stick the painting from now on. Stay out of police work. I think I can promise you he will, Sid. Now, look, just a minute, May. I, I've got a living to make. Well, not for the next couple of years. Oh, what does that mean? Well, don't you know what the insurance company reward is for recovering that million dollars? Ten percent. What? For one hundred thousand dollars, darling. You can paint what you want. Hey, I think I'll start tonight. Let's the three of us go out on the town and paint it red. The pen, they say, is mightier than the sword. In this case, it was the pencil or the paintbrush. Maybe you've seen some of Barry Jordan's works. They hang in the best galleries, and the price for them is going up. One thing that can be said of his style is that it is modern. With it. Today. He is one painter who looks only to the future. Never the past. I'll be back shortly. Not all of us can be as lucky as Barry Jordan. There are dark pockets in all our pasts. But perhaps there's a lesson to be learned... Sooner or later, a man like Duke or Mad Dog would have been brought to justice. It was sheer luck that Barry was the agency. And even greater luck that by raising the dead, he didn't lose his own life. It was Longfellow who said, Let the dead past bury its dead. For all of us, the present and the future is where we should direct our eyes. Our cast included Paul Hecht, E.V. Juster, Mandel Kramer, and Russell Horton. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. I hope you enjoyed this episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater. If you enjoyed this and want to hear more, please subscribe to this channel. You can also visit my other YouTube channel by searching Mr. Brian McCarthy in the YouTube search bar. Until then, thanks for listening.